come I confess Bowing here I find my rest And without you I fall apart And you're the one That guides my heart And Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you is more where grace is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me and where you are Lord I am free with Knox Presbyterian Church in Bracebridge. It is Sunday, April the 19th, the first Sunday in the season of Easter. We celebrated Easter Sunday last week, and we mentioned at that time that Easter is a beginning. It is not an ending. Easter is a season that takes place over a period of time ending on Pentecost Sunday, which this year falls on May 31st. But Easter is not just a season. It is truly a mindset. It is a way of living. Easter signifies new life, resurrected life, and we live out the resurrection story every time we recognize the promise and the opportunities 
that exist in every single day. This seems especially significant this year as we spend this time in quarantine, staying at home to keep ourselves and our communities safe. And it may be more challenging for us to live out this Easter mindset when we are in this time of isolation. One day blends into another, Monday feels like Thursday, Tuesday feels like Friday, and every day we are dealing with the effects of isolation and every day we are being confronted with news stories that are filled with sorrow and grief and anxiety. Even though we are now in this season of Easter, it still feels very much like Lent, or even like we are stuck on Good Friday. I participated in an online workshop last week, and one of the speakers shared that there is a very valid reason why we are feeling like we are still in the season of Lent. And he went on to explain that the word quarantine and the word Lent have very much in common. Now we know that Lent is a period of 40 days. It symbolizes the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness, in the desert, before beginning his public ministry. A 40 is a significant number in the scriptures, and it can also represent the 40 years that the Hebrew people spent wandering in the wilderness. Well, the word quarantine actually has the number 40 as its root. Well, we're familiar with the French word quarante, which is the word for 40. And the word quarantine comes from the Italian word quarantena, which also means 40. And it was used to designate a period of time when ships coming into harbor would have to rest. Nobody could disembark for a period of 40 days. That was their quarantine time. And that was during the time of the Black Plague in the 14th century. So it's no wonder that our time in quarantine during this Easter season feels very much like Lent. It's as if our Lent and our Easter have combined this year. And while we do spend this time in quarantine during the season of Lent that seems to be extending into the season of Easter, we still search for signs of Easter hope. We still search for signs of new resurrected life. And as we prepare to search for these signs of hope in our worship service today, I'd like to share with you a new Eastertide poem that was released last Sunday by British poet, priest, and academic Malcolm Gate. Gate is an interesting character. If you get a chance, look him up on Google. He sort of looks like Gandalf from The Lord of the Rings or Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter. He was born in Nigeria while his parents were there serving. He spent part of his childhood in Canada, and then he settled in England, where he now is an academic, where he teaches at the University of Cambridge. However, he does come back to Canada quite frequently to serve as a speaker and a guest lecturer. Gate is best known for his sonnets. And last Sunday, as we celebrated Easter in the midst of a pandemic, he released this new poem. And where is Jesus this strange Easter day? Not lost in our locked churches any more than he was sealed in that dark sepulcher. The locks are loosed, the stone is rolled away, and he is up and risen long before, alive at large and making his strong way into the world he gave his life to save. No need to seek him in an empty grave. He might have been a wafer in the hands of priests this day, or music from the lips of red-robed choristers. Instead, he slips away from church, shakes off our linen bands to don his apron with a nurse. He grips and lifts a stretcher, soothes with gentle hands the frail flesh of the dying, gives them hope, breathes with the breathless, lends them strength to cope. On Thursday, we applauded, for he came and served us in a thousand names and faces, mopping our sick room floors and catching traces of that virus, which was death to him. Good Friday happened in a thousand places where Jesus held the helpless, died with them, that they might share his Easter in their need. Now they are risen with him, risen indeed. 
as we find ourselves in this Easter that still resembles Lent quarantine. I invite you to join with me in prayer. We rejoice in the new life of this Easter season, Lord, but for many of us, it still feels like Lent. The days blend one into the other, and we do our very best to stay home is our act of love, keeping ourselves and others safe. But it is hard, and there are some days when hope is difficult to see. We feel despair for those who are sick and grieving. We feel awe for those frontline workers and first responders. And we feel helpless and wish we could do more. Above all, God, help us to feel love, your love and the love of others, and help us to share that love, especially now. Guide us in that task, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll join together now in singing hymn number 265, Hail the Day That Sees Christ Rise, and it is played for us by our organist, Paul Gockel. Our scripture passage today comes from the Gospel of John. We're going to take a look at John chapter 20 verses 10 to 19 and we're going to experience the reading today through an excerpt from the movie The Gospel of John. The movie The Gospel of John came out when I was in my first year of seminary at Knox College and one of my professors, Pat Dutcher Walls, served as a consultant to help put this movie together. So I invite you to experience now 
John chapter 20, verses 10 to 19, the tomb has been found to be empty. The disciples, John and Peter, have come to see it for themselves, but then they return home. But Mary decides to linger at the tomb a while. Then the disciples went back home. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. And saw two angels there, dressed in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head, the other at the feet. Woman, why are you crying? They asked her. They have taken my Lord away. And I do not know where they have put them. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who was it that you were looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, If you took him away, sir, Tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary. She turned toward him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni. This means teacher. Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet gone back up to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to him who is my Father and their Father my God and their God. So Mary Magdalene went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and related to them what he had told her. It was late that Sunday evening and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. So poet Malcolm Geit released that poem last Easter, a new poem for this very significant Easter Sunday, but he also re-released another poem from his collection, Sounding the Seasons. And this poem is based on this passage that we just heard from John chapter 20. He blesses every love which weeps and grieves, and now he blesses hers who stood and wept and would not be consoled or leave her love's last touching place, but watched as low light crept up from the east. A sound behind her stirs, a scatter of bright bird song through the air. She turns, but cannot focus through her tears or recognize the gardener standing there. She hardly hears his gentle question, why? Why are you weeping? or sees the play of light that brightens as she chokes out her reply. They took my love away. My day is night. And then she hears her name. She hears love say the word that turns her night and ours today. It's when Mary hears her name that the significance of this new life, this Easter life, becomes reality to her. It's when Mary hears love call her name that she recognizes that her life as she once knew it is no more and a new life with a new purpose is just beginning. And this realization takes place because Mary lingered a while longer at the tomb. Upon hearing the news about the empty tomb, the disciples run to come and see it for themselves, but then we read that they return to their homes. But Mary didn't go with them. She stayed behind, lingering at the tomb a while longer. And this Sunday, perhaps that's where we need to be as well. Lingering, reflecting, and hopefully recognizing the risen Christ who becomes visible as love, to use the words of poet Malcolm Geit. Now that moment spent lingering at the tomb was pivotal for Mary. And later in John's Gospel, we read that the time huddled behind locked doors 
was pivotal for the disciples, that is when they experienced Jesus. That is where they heard their name spoken in love. That is where they received the peace of Christ breathed upon their reality. And that is where their lives began again. The old life was gone and new life had begun. They all went forth from that transitional period of mourning and fear and uncertainty to live lives that looked very different from the ones that they had left behind. They became influencers in their houses of worship and in their communities. They spoke about justice and freedom and equality. They taught love and compassion and mercy. Their old lives were gone and new life had begun. We are living in a pivotal time. Right now, our lives have been put on pause. This is our time to linger at the tomb a while longer like Mary, to huddle behind locked doors like the disciples. But this is also our time to reflect and think and pray about what our life, our new life, is going to look like after this time at the tomb is over, after we come out from behind those locked doors. So many sacrifices are being made during this time of quarantine. So many lives are being lost, especially among our most vulnerable communities. So many jobs are being lost. So many relationships are being lost. And we cannot let these losses be in vain. This is our opportunity to think about what has to change. This is our opportunity to think about how we can become a more compassionate and caring people, how we can ensure that all members of our communities are safe and protected and cared for, how we can change our lifestyles, our workplaces, our social interactions, the way in which we do business to create a world that is just, that is fair, that is compassionate for all people. This is our time to linger at the tomb a while, to huddle behind our locked doors, and to experience the risen Christ who breathes peace into our reality, who calls each one of us in love by name, and to discover ways we can live out that peace and that love when we come out from behind these closed doors. And perhaps then, we would experience the transformation from night to day that poet Malcolm Gates speaks about so eloquently. Why are you weeping, the gardener asks? They took my love away. My day is night. And then she hears her name. She hears love say the word that turns her night and ours into day. Please join with me in prayer. There are many days that feel very much like night during this time of crisis. God, hear the cries of your children, receive the prayers of your beloved, and turn our night into day. Amen. Well, during this Lent Easter sort of mashup time, this time spent lingering at the tomb, this time spent behind locked doors, we do still see signs of God's hope. The hope of new life, the hope of resurrected life, and the hope that is described in this wonderful Easter hymn, Thine Be the Glory.
together now for the prayers of the people, I would just like to express my thanks and gratitude for the generosity that I'm seeing in our community and within our congregation. We are seeing people donate generously to the Mana Food Bank, to the COVID-19 emergency fund set up by the hospital here in Bracebridge. And you continue to donate generously to the work of Knox Presbyterian Church, and we're so thankful for that. There are a variety of ways that you can continue to do so. You can go to our website, knoxbracebridge.ca, and there you will find a Donate Now button. Uh, you can mail in your donations to the church or slip them through the crack of the door at the front door of the church. Or you can register for PAR, pre-approved remittance. And that way, your offering, your gift to Knox Presbyterian Church comes to us every month, no matter what is going on in the world. So in the spirit of thanks and generosity, let's join together now for the prayers of the people. God of new life, we find ourselves in this suspended reality when our lives have been put on pause and around us we see such suffering and fear. Use this time to challenge us to help us discover how we need to change our lives, our communities, our systems, and our interactions to create a world that is safe, just, and compassionate for all, not just for the privileged few. Don't let this time be in vain, but as we linger at the tomb a while longer in prayer and reflection, Show us the way to go forward when those locked doors are finally opened once again. For those who are grieving, help us to be your expression of comfort. For those who are worried about employment, bills, payments, help us to be your expression of provision. For those who are sick in body and spirit, help us to be your expression of healing. And as we live in this Easter season that still feels very much like Lent, help us to see your signs of hope that are all around us. We pray this in the name of the one who is living hope. Amen. So as you spend this time lingering at the tomb a while longer, like Mary, huddled behind closed doors like the disciples, receive the love of God who calls you by name. Receive the peace of Christ that is breathed upon your reality and then go forth to share that love and peace. Bring hope to the hopeless, love to the lonely and justice to the oppressed, following in the footsteps of Jesus, of love who shows us the way. Amen. <laughs>